Hope you doing well. In our previous video, we discussed the CAPM model. Now, in this video, we are going to discuss about the assumptions, assumptions of CAPM, that is capital asset pricing model. The equation is expected return or RE is equal to RF plus beta RM minus RF. So first let's revise something about this expected return or required rate of return that I expect from a share RF that is the risk free rate of return investing in government bonds or securities beta what is beta sensitivity of a stock in respect to market market changes by 1% what will be the stock change by RM minus RF is the premium the compensation for bearing this beta the risk. So in this video, we are going to understand the assumptions of CAPM. They are only nine and it is being presented in the most easy and exciting form you will ever see. So let's begin with the first one. The first assumption of CAPM that is the rational investment goals. Now, what is the meaning of rational? Rational means to make a choice, to make a decision that yields you the opportunity optimal or the maximum benefit now he is the investor willing to invest the money so what is his rational decision will be the rational choice that is to get a higher return and to bear the least possible risk so what is the first assumption of CAPM that investors are risk lovers or they are rational towards return that is they love risk and they hate they hate risk that is risk ever so the first assumption of CAPM that investors are rational towards return and they are risk ever they have the rational investment goals the second the second assumption of CAPM is related with the time now you see that there is three 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 and three but investors are different he is a he is b he is c and he is d that means the time period is same that is one and same holding period for all investors in typical language the second assumption is uniform 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 single period investment horizon that is the same horizon holding period for all the investors third assumption the third assumption is related with this not entire equation it is only related with this RF what was that RF the risk free rate of return the return that you will be getting from investing your money in the government bonds or treasury bills that helps no risk so an investor now he is relaxed why is he relaxed because he know that he can borrow now this is one of the biggest not one of the it is the first bank in the world that is the industrial and commercial bank of china so he is relaxed not because it is the first bank because he knows that he can borrow and lend any amount that is there he can borrow and invest amount at RF as much as his want as much as he wants there is no foundation no limitations he can borrow and he can invest as per his desire so the third was the investors can borrow and lend at RF any amount now the fourth, the fourth assumption of CAPM, that is the perfect information. Because the CAPM model assumes that the markets are perfect, that is the perfect information is available to all. There is no insider trading or there is no secret information available to few individuals, few investors. So that is the perfect market or the perfect information. They can analyze and they can use that information. The fifth 
assumption of CAPM is that securities or assets are divisible and they are liquid. So first let's revise again what were the five. The first one, investors have rational investment goals. They are rational towards return and they are risk averse. The second was there is uniform single period investment horizon. The third investors can borrow and lend any amount at RF as much as the investors wants or desire. The fourth, the perfect information is available not to one but to all investors. The fifth, securities are liquid that is they can be easily converted into cash and they are divisible that is 10, 5, 15 it is not in points. Now comes the sixth assumption of CAPM. Only three are left. The sixth is no, no, and no. What is this no? The no is no taxes, no transaction costs, and there is no restriction on short selling. Now, what is the meaning of short selling? Let's discuss that also. That means you are not having in selling something. It's simple. It's in the stock market that when you are expecting that the prices will fall, so you buy, you first sell, you sell at 100 and then you purchase at 80. So you sell at high and bought at low, so 20 profit. That is the short selling we will discuss later on that also. So the sixth, that is no taxes, no restriction on short selling and no transaction cost. Now the seventh, the most important assumption of CAPM. It is the balance or the equilibrium because the CAPM model is an equilibrium model. Equilibrium model where IV0 is equal to P0. Now what is IV0? That is the intrinsic value is equal to price. What is the meaning of this? So IV0 that is the intrinsic value is the present value of future cash inflows that are discounted discounted using the required rate of return that is of similar bonds whereas p0 is the price of future cash flows discounted at the rate of return of that particular bond so it is an equilibrium model equilibrium model that is iv0 is equal to p0 or I must say the expected return is equal to the required rate of return. So CAPM important assumption is an equilibrium model. Now the eighth, the second last assumption is that related with not with the market but these investors. Now as you can see I, you or anyone else who is an investor, they are price takers and investor cannot influence the price of a share that's the assumption of CAPM and the last one that is the ninth assumption it is the homogeneous expectations all have the homogeneous expectations that is the they have the same expectations not the heterogeneous that is the different expectations so these were all nine assumptions of CAPM thanks for watching this